54 seconds to go in the first ever AFC Championship game played at Arrowhead Stadium. Hey, let's go. It's Matt Foster win. Let's go, act like it. The Chiefs, in a minute and 29 seconds, regained the lead on a running touchdown by Damian Williams. Blast in there, touchdown! The Chiefs are right in the thick of it, baby, here in the AFC Championship game. Let's go get them. Let's go get them right now. And getting the ball back, essentially 157 from the last. It's be 60 minutes, that's what we got. We keep going. The Patriots have moved quickly to the Kansas City 21-yard line. Hey, let's go to the Super Bowl now. Hey, this is go to the Super Bowl. The season's on the line. You don't have a great outside receiver. They have a great pass rush. You've got to get the ball off quick. Tom Brady. Chiefs with two deep safeties. Brady takes the snap. Fires it near side. The pass deflected and intercepted. It is intercepted. Now lost out of bounds. But the Chiefs should have the ball. Traverius Ward has it. But a penalty offside on Kansas City is going to neutralize it. Final score, Patriots 37, Chiefs 31. I mean, this hurts. I mean, it's supposed to hurt. You're doing everything you can to get to the Super Bowl and, and to win it. And uh, we know that this can be a building block. It could be something that, that carries us in the future. I mean, right now it's the end, but uh, hopefully it's just the beginning of a, of a long time. Kansas City, this is the Border Patrol Live on Sports Radio 810 WHB. And although we're still bitterly disappointed at what happened in the AFC Championship game, I believe with all my heart they're going to be right back there again next year with a chance to win that game and get to the Super Bowl. All right, here we go. Um, the guys are coming in doing their exit physicals today. I'll have a chance to talk to the team. That's really what today's about. Uh, obviously, our goal was to bring a Super Bowl here and uh, to get that done. Um, it didn't happen, but uh, we will go back to work. And again, we'll go back and evaluate once things settle down here a little bit. So anyways, with that, time's yours. Culture is what you make and how you grow it. So that's what we're doing. We're going to grow it together. And there's always an influx of players that come and go. There's an influx of coaches that come and go. But there's a foundation that's been built over the six years, seven years coming up here now. So how do you continue to grow that into this next year? Building from an already established foundation that led Kansas City to three straight double-digit win seasons, Andy Reid and company would make it four, leading the team to a third straight AFC West title. If the Chiefs can beat the rival Raiders, the Kansas City Chiefs will win the AFC West for the third consecutive year, something that's never been done in the 59 years. And the first home playoff victory since Montana Magic. Hand off, Darrell Williams, right side, inside the five, powers, touchdown! Kansas City, the Kansas City Chiefs have beaten the Indianapolis Colts 31 to 13. Let's go! Let's go! That's the way you win a football game. Every phase of the game stepped up when it needed to. Yes, sir. We got a short I like the way the guys came together as a team. I like the way they played. But you go to some of the games where you, the Ram game jumps out at you. Even though we lost the game, it was a, a big time event uh, in Los Angeles. It was the Rams are back. As for this game, we got nine and one against nine and one. We got great offenses. And Goff and Mahomes, these young quarterbacks with, it feels like the first main event showdown for the next generation. Listen up, baby. Take advantage of the day. When you get an opportunity in this game, you make a play. Yeah. You make a play. You make a play. The playmakers all three. One, two, three. Mahomes, belt high snap, looking right, turns left, goes middle, caught Kelsey, touchdown, Kansas City, just blows by Nickel Roby, and the Chiefs cash in again as Kelsey with a great catch and a great route and great protection, and the Chiefs can tie it. This is still game on, baby. Come right back to that. They can't stop that. It's one of those games that sticks out in your mind. 
Both teams, I thought, got after each other and played good aggressive football. He's hit! He's stacked it! Pulled away! It's going to be a touchdown! Kansas City! That's a game we lost. Uh, but some of the games where we developed into a good football team and you had that, that those battles, whether it was against the Chargers or whether it was against the Patriots, again, uh, a couple of those we lost, but they were they were great football games. And so let's close that gap. How are we going to do that? Are you going to let the little things slide? Or are you going to step on them and, and go do that extra uh, bit of work to make yourself great? And then do you want to be great? You know, and so my thing is, Every day, be great. So it's not comparing yourself to anybody else, but maximize what you are as a person, as a player. We're saving, we're saving, we're saving completion for the game. Yeah, I'm wired. <laughs> Big timer. Where you been? I'm doing a little rehab. Oh, uh, doing a rehab? Yes, sir. You did just play a game a couple days ago, didn't you? Yes, sir. Yeah, yes, you had sir. a great year, though. I appreciate yeah, I know it. it ain't the way you wanted it. Mine didn't either. But, yeah. but you had a great year, man. I appreciate yeah. it. We're talking Jim Kelly. Jim Kelly. Nice the best of all time yes, right sir. here now. You know that. Yes, sir. So we're yeah. just talking like, okay, where's this guy? Where's this guy? Yeah. Go get your finger up play on. <laughs> <laughs> he just told me zero dose, 337, F slice, naked right, how? All right, here we go. Here we go. Let's go zero dose, 337, F slice, naked right, pal. Here we go. All right, let's go one, eight, 43. Oh, yeah. I got you. It feels amazing. I mean, get to be out here with uh, a lot of my uh, best friends and teammates, and uh, we're enjoying it. We didn't end up where we wanted to be at, but uh, we did a lot of great things we can build on uh, for the for the future coming up. This is what we work for, in our, you know, in our careers. Um, it's the guys that you're on the field with and the people you see on tape every day that, you know, bring you here. So to be recognized like that, is, it's a big honor. Chiefs Kingdom's awesome. You know, the fans voting like, like crazy for me, I know that. And then to be voted on by your peers and coaches is, is special too. So just eight years of hard work is, uh, Maybe panning out. All right, let's go. Half right strong, 72, burnt in the go. Here we go. Set. It's a 180. Watch that. While Patrick Mahomes and the rest of the Chiefs teammates enjoy the Florida sun, 500 miles away, more than 100 college seniors have arrived in Mobile, Alabama for an all star week of their own, looking to make a lasting impression on NFL scouts, general managers, and coaches. Well, this is the fourth time that I've coached it. Um, and it is an advantage, I think, because the pool of players every year is what it is. But you get a chance to see them behind the scenes, who really loves it, who really learns it, and who can really execute. But you're going to get to learn 100 players and get some hands-on information that you couldn't get if you weren't coaching the game. So we've drafted players from this game before, and I'm sure we'll do that again. With all the draft picks you guys have, you said you want to build this team up the Raider way. What exactly is that? Look, we got, a, we got a long way to go to get back to where we need to be. Obviously, the Kansas City Chiefs are in the Final Four. We got to match up better. We got to improve our coverage. We got to improve our underneath coverage. We got to, we got to deal with Kelsey and Tyreek Hill. And we got to deal with a lot of problems that they present other than Mahomes. So we, we got a long way to go to get there. But yes, we got to do a better job matching up with Mahomes and the Chiefs. The task of watching hours of film is no joke. After a full week in Mobile, Chief Scouts and team personnel returned to Kansas City to analyze how these prospects performed under the lights of Ladd Peebles Stadium. To help with this daunting task, Brett Veach invited another set of eyes. How's it going? How's it going? Can I have some paper? Get him a notepad so he looks like he's like... Isn't it funny how, like... Other people's jobs are so much more interesting to other people than your own job is to yourself a lot of times. Yeah. Like, like yeah, well, yeah, for, and, and it's the same. It's like, and then you'd get there and you'd be like, okay, I'm, I'm good. I want to go back to my job now, you know? It's like. The one thing about this league is you find out really quickly that it, it's a long season and it is really is a battle of attrition. 
You want to go through the practice stuff? Let me do the one-on-ones. I actually didn't see the, the north ones like that. This, you know what? This guy didn't have a great week. No. And you know what was he hurt? Saturday. What's the 63 guy's name? That's Dieter. Dieter. Oh, oh, Dieter. Brad yeah. Brad Brad oh, 65. Yeah. You're all over that. How do you know Brad Berry? I watched the Senior Bowl. Oh, okay. I watched the one-on-one. -on -one oh, you did? Yeah. Oh, I think go. certainly anybody in this position truly loves watching tape, evaluating talent, and, and constructing a roster. But I think the best part of my job is being in that draft room with with my fellow scouts uh, and that's the, the really cool part about this deal we've been together as a staff since 2013 and they're not just my co-workers they're they're like my best friends so to go in there and to be totally honest on how you feel about a player um, to some days enter a room and and have arguments and shouting matches at, at each other and then leave the room and then when you come back in to do a different player a different position know that everyone was doing it for the right reason and that's to make the Chiefs better we're just gonna buzz through uh, we have the video guys kind of um, edited this first, so we have O-line, D-line, running back, linebackers, wideouts, D-backs. We'll go north, then we'll go south, and then we'll watch the game. And th that should kind of... So what, what do you want to see when you're seeing these guys on each other as far as, like, I don't know what the criteria is for Senior Bowl, but are these supposed to be the best of the best, or they're, it's arbitrary and this is selected by somebody that they think? Do you want to see a guy dominating, or do you want to see pretty good just head-on-head -head football? Yeah, well, I mean, typically your best guys are the underclassmen that come out. You'll get some top 10 guys out of this game, but typically these guys are more like, you know, mid to late first. Yeah. And then really all your second, third round, this is like the bulk. So really most of your draft picks are, are from this game because this is like second, third, and fourth round all day right here. One of the unique things about the Senior Bowl is the competitive environment for the entire week. So it's really a chance for our personnel staff to go out there and see how these guys practice and what kind of intensity they bring in day in and day out, which is a really unique part of that whole process. And then I think for me as an evaluator, another thing that I always take away from the senior bowl is, is positional flex. You know, this, it's a long season, it's a battle of attrition, and guys are going to get injured and hurt and things will happen. So I don't think you can ever approach an off season thinking you're okay at any position. So with that in mind, we'll certainly have target positions that we're looking for. You guys can feel free to chime in, but like for this, I mean, for watching offensive linemen here, you're just looking for lateral quickness, agility, able to bend your hips, shoot your hands, anchor, stay, you know, stay square, play balance. That's some, that's some drive off the ball there. Yeah, but he finishes this guy. He puts him down with one arm at the end of this play. Slap. It's funny, you know, it's, it's like one of those things, it's like you watch a lot of it and it, you know, it's not rocket science. Yeah. I mean, it's not like, you know, I mean, anybody can really sit here after a while and figure it out. It's just a matter of watching a ton of stuff. Steve Spagnolo comes to Kansas City boasting nearly 36 years of coaching experience. In 1999, the defensive-minded coach broke into the National Football League under Andy Reid's Philadelphia Eagles. The things that he did and the chances he was willing to take and the people he was putting in the right spots, to me, that's probably been the crux and the foundation of, of what I've done uh, since then. Spagnola wasted no time in becoming one of the league's most respected defensive minds, most notably for his time spent in New York orchestrating one of the league's nastiest defensive fronts to date. Really the three things that are vital to defensive football, that's being able to defeat blocks, great effort, and being able to tackle. I had a chance to sit down with Steve and talk about uh, what he's looking for, um, you know, position by position. What meant a lot to me is I stepped into their meeting room, the scouts meeting room, and there was all those characteristics. And that means a lot. I've always felt like coaching and personnel, when they can be like that, it, it just makes you that much stronger. Now we know that every single team, they like to address those off-season needs, but when it comes to those Kansas City Chiefs LT, mm -hmm. what is it? The secondary, no question. Actually, it's both, uh, cornerback and safety. Approaching free agency, general manager Brett Veach has a clear vision for the DNA of the 2019 Chiefs defense. Ian, where's Tyron Matthew going? He is going to Kansas City. The Honey Badger has another new Here's home. And the Chiefs so made a people. splash in free agency, intending to sign Tyron Matthew to a three-year deal. A third-round draft pick in 2013 by the Arizona Cardinals, Tyron Matthew, also known as the Honey Badger, has worked to earn the reputation of being a Swiss Army knife on the field. Boyer steps up and gets sacked by the Badger at the Providing versatility, leadership, and energy on defense, 
and the Texans take over. They're going to win their fourth consecutive game. That's four in a row. That's four. Matthews' disruptive style of play has the ability to change a game at any given moment. He's got a unique way about him. When you have a nickname in the National Football League uh, um, and, and players believe in you, they, they, they use that and, and tag you with that. That's uh, like a badge of honor. And so uh, he comes in, he's a humble guy that's dirty tough and loves, loves to play the game. He also brings a leadership with him. Every place he's been, from high school to college to the NFL, everybody raves about the person and the leadership. That's what we're getting here. I want to officially welcome uh, Tyron and uh, Sydney to the, to the Chiefs kingdom. Um, we're super excited about, about Tyron. And, and one of the things that was really interesting um, when we started this free agency process with Coach Spagnola was uh, I remember him coming down to the office after we gave him a list of safeties to watch. And he would go down the list and he would say strengths and weaknesses. And I like this guy and this and that. Here, here's what he can do. Here's what he can't do. And he got to Ty and he said, I, I, I'm struggling to find out what he can't do. And I said, Coach, say, say, no, say no more. We're going to get him. So, uh, again, we're super excited to have him here. And uh, with that, I'll let him take the floor. Oh, yeah. Uh, how's everybody doing? You know, I'd really like to start out by thanking God, um, obviously. It's been a great, you know, uh, last couple of days. Um, I think everybody's really been uh, welcoming, you know, uh, embracing me. Um, sharing a lot of support, a lot of encouragement. Um, so, I mean, just really, I'm really excited to be a part of a, you know, a really good football team, great organization. Um, just like I said, you know, just want to put my hand in the pile and help this defense make some plays. You know, anytime you can play for an organization you know, with great history, uh, obviously, uh, you know, a, a young quarterback that's, you know, really going to take this league over. Uh, it was really was a no-brainer for me uh, and my family. The Arizona Cardinals have, have informed Tyron Matthew their versatile defensive back that they are releasing him. Uh, so that is officially over the high-priced defensive back. Just got a huge extent. Last year, obviously different circumstances, you know, being released from the Cardinals, um, you know, um, and then really having to, to really see what, what was out there for me again. Um, and I think this time around, uh, it, it, was, it was different. You know, I think uh, I knew where I wanted to go especially once teams started to reach out to me and I started to narrow it down, um, it, was, it was hard to turn down Kansas City. Chiefs Kingdom, it's Tyron Matthew, the Honey Badger here. Can't wait to get started, uh, can't wait to make plays, I can't wait to get involved in the community. Let's roll. Yes, sir. I love doing it all. I'm a football player. Um, you know, uh, my coach gives me a job. I just try my best to, to do it. Um, but I think any time I could get around the football, close to it, uh, I just feel like superpowers, you know. <laughs> and any time I'm away from the football, I just feel like my powers are diminishing. So, yeah. <laughs> jersey. The jersey. One thing you're going to notice on our game jersey now, when Lamar passed away, when he passed away in 2006, the Hunt family wanted to honor Lamar. So they took the old American Football League logo, mm -hmm. put his initials mm -hmm. nice and tiny on the football because he right. put the league's best interest above everyone else's, right. and it's also over the heart. Gotcha. Uh, and this is now a permanent part of our journey. Exactly. You know, I grew up, uh, you know, I played for Kenilworth Chiefs uh, in, in New Orleans, Louisiana, in East, Eastern New Orleans. And, uh, you know, it's just funny because it's the exact same symbol. It's the, you know, the KC, Kenilworth Chiefs, and then the Kansas City Chiefs. So I, I think I think life is just, life comes full circle when you, when you got your eyes open, I guess. One position the Chiefs will not be in the market for is quarterback. In his first season as a starter in Kansas City, Patrick Mahomes took the entire National Football League by storm. Patrick Mahomes with Mahomes magic. Starting left, peeling right, three drives, three touchdowns for the Chiefs. Rudy, don't make a play. Oh, no. Do everything you got on that field. Let's go. In his 2018 campaign, Mahomes would boast many memorable moments paving the way to an eventual league MVP title, all while redefining the quarterback position. He throws it for six with his left hand. Look at the magic of the quarterback, just moving around, dancing, and then throws it like almost no luck. There's a wide right. Snap to Mahomes at his belt, sidestepping. Fires for the end zone, the pass is going to be caught. Touchdown, Kansas City. Patrick Mahomes breaking the record of Lenny the Cool Dawson 55 years ago.
going to do, watch this. Hang on. I'm not saying I want you to do that. You know, <laughs> like, Grandpa, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Stand by. Action. 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 So basically today what Action. we're going to do, we're going we're gonna to take photos of Patrick Mahomes for the cover of Madden 20. Wow. Okay, so switch it to um, up on the front. So the we need to cover. These are sample. These are like direction images. Basically a way for us to speak to Patrick so he can see exactly what we need him to do. So basically when Patrick shows up, see which one he wants to do, which ones he doesn't want to do, and then we start shooting. Nice Patrick, yeah. I'm Rafael. I'm the nice photographer. Good nice to meet you, man. Yeah, yeah. How's it going? Good. How are you doing? Generally, you know, I try to talk with them for about five minutes before the shoot, only to get them to relax. Right away, from the get-go. The first few photos that I saw, I thought, oh, this guy's great. He looks amazing. To be honest, after that, it just becomes a blur to me. It's about checking boxes and getting those sheets out of the wall. Wow. And I think we got everything wow. we wanted. Wow. Uh -huh. Here we go. There you go. Great. There we go. Action. Now we're going to move in a little bit. Action. Action. You're going to start walking to it. Have the Madden shoot, uh, gonna be on the Madden cover. It is really crazy, you know, when you're when you're thinking about stuff, you're not thinking about being the cover athlete uh, on Madden. It's a special experience. Hey guys, everyone heads up, we're firing into the net. So Excited for the opportunity to get to represent Chiefs Kingdom, and hopefully you all enjoy it. Beautiful. That's it. There we go. Thanks, man. Good evening, everyone. One of the highlights of the 101 every year is that we get to also honor our Chiefs Award winners. What a year. <laughs> in many ways, the best year in Chiefs history, which brought the Chiefs kingdom literally well, first, I brought the first AFC championship game ever to Arrowhead and to our city. Our first home playoff victory in a generation, and within seconds, literally seconds, of a Super Bowl. Let's watch. Each year since the AFL-NFL merger, Kansas City has paid tribute to the league's best by hosting a prestigious awards event to honor the season's top achievements. This year, Kansas City would steal the show, honoring their first ever league MVP. Patrick Mahomes just took the NFL by storm this year. I mean, the Chiefs were in the AFC Championship game, and oh yeah, he threw for 50 touchdowns. That is why Patrick Mahomes is the AFC Offensive Player of the Year. 2018 AP Most Valuable Player is... Patrick Mahomes! I'm truly honored to win the NFL's Most Valuable Player Award. Yeah. This season was special, and there was a lot of people that helped me get to this point. Number 15, Patrick Mahomes. Let's go, Let's go. My coaches, Coach Reed, Coach Kafka, Coach Bienemy, and most of all the players, I mean, they give me their all every single day, and this is an award for all of us. I want to thank Chiefs Kingdom. Your passion and love is unmatched. You're here no matter when and where. This is just the beginning. We have a long ways to go. Thank you.
on this yeah, side, yeah. bro. Oh, it's heavy. Awesome. All right. Set this down right here. How are y'all doing? Oh. <laughs> Good to see you guys. Patrick, congratulations. Yeah, thank you. Thank you for that. It's awesome. When you look back at the season, uh, we, did a, we did a lot of great things. And like you said, ultimately we, did, ultimately, we didn't get to our ultimate goal of winning the Super Bowl. But I'm on a great team in a great environment and a great city uh, where they've really pushed me to succeed. And so, yeah. I've been, I've been put, put in a lot of great spots, and I just enjoyed every single minute of it. And uh, like, I, like I said a couple weeks back, I mean, this is just the beginning, and I'm looking forward to keep building and becoming a better football player and a, a better teammate to my team. So, Eric, you guys knew what you had before you got started. Did you drive home at night sometimes and just at a stoplight break into hysterical laughter because the league had no idea what was about to hit them? <laughs> Here's the funny part. You guys have seen these, these no-look passes, you know, that take place. And it's still pretty fun. And it's still pretty amazing to watch. But we saw that when he was doing all the practice squad stuff. It was like, damn, did he just do that? Did you see that? And I, I recall uh, when he threw the left-handed pass uh, against Denver. I remember, you know, Coach Reed gives me the play. I'm spitting in the play. After I get the play and I look over to Coach Reed and say, damn, did he just throw that with his left hand? <laughs> and... and <laughs> Those are the things that you just sit back and it's like, okay, yeah, we at the playground. This is it's time to ball now. This is some fun stuff. Guys, it's a pleasure. And why don't we have a round of applause? Eric the enemy from the Chiefs, the AFC Offensive Player of the Year, Patrick Mahomes. Thanks, Patrick. Appreciate it. I got ah. Thing is heavy. Oh, I, I, I bet. <laughs> hey, you know, that's good. That's good. That's good. Good job. 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 Certainly excited to be uh, in Indianapolis here to officially start the 2019 season. Just got another text. The Frank Clark trade to the Kansas City Chiefs is, in fact, happening. Walking down the halls and you see Derek Thomas on the wall, Will Shields. It's inspiring. I think this kid's a dynamic route runner, and I mentioned this to a number of people. This kid reminds me of Chad Johnson when he came out, and that's Ocho Cinco. With the 56th pick in the 2019 NFL Draft, the Kansas City Chiefs have selected... i tell you what, our draft team is really excited to bring you here. You're going to love playing for Coach Reed. We're going we're gonna to wear you out, man. Those D-balls, those D-balls, right? I need it, yes, sir.